All right, so in this tutorial, we will be looking at how to create a simple dialogue system. The way this works is you will, first of all, create your user interface. At that point, you'll be able to add a dialogue script onto your NPCs and just enter the information you want for them to talk. So if Martin's talking, we can put his name in, tell him what we'd like him to say, and then add his face. We can then have others respond by adding more lines to the dialogue. It's as simple as that. You can then walk up to your NPC, push a button, and advance through the dialogue by pressing more buttons. It will also reset itself so that you can come back and repeat the dialogue. All right, that's where we're headed in this tutorial. Let's get started. All right, so our first task is going to be to create our UI. So you can head on over to your hierarchy, where we're just going to add a UI canvas to get things started. I'm gonna call this one my dialogue canvas. Now, while we're on this canvas, there's a couple little things we need to do. You can head to your canvas scaler here. And first of all, rather than constant pixel size, we do want to scale with screen size. And because my game is set to 1920 by 1080 or full HD, I want to use those as my reference numbers. All right, with that done, we can right click our dialog canvas, add a UI panel. And this one will be the panel for our name. So we can call it name panel. The numbers I'm going to be using for size are just going to be 50 and 50 on the left and top. And then on the right, we'll go with 1050 and 950. This is just gonna be a little panel that will have our player's name on it. And we can right click on that name panel, go to UI, and we're gonna add a text mesh pro, which I'll name speaker text. And all I wanna do here, first of all, is I'm gonna click on my rect transform. And down in the bottom right here, I want to stretch. And then I'm also gonna hold down my option key, I believe it's alt on PC, and click again. And it'll just automatically make that so that it fills the entire space. Also just going to make a slight buffer on the left side of 20, which will make sense a little bit later. And down here, I'm just gonna write player name. So we have some text in there. And then I just am gonna make this look the way I want it to. So you can set this up how you like. Personally, I'm a big fan of the bangers font. I'm gonna set mine to be black. And I'm also going to write align mine, which is why I set that little barrier there is I don't want my letters to go all the way to the very edge of the panel. Now, while I'm here, I'm just actually gonna click on that name panel one more time. And for color, I'm gonna make mine a little more opaque. I like to set mine at about 80. We can now head to our dialogue canvas one more time, and we're gonna add one more panel. This one will be the actual dialogue panel itself. And for our numbers, we'll go with 50 and 140 for the left and top. And then on our right side, we're gonna go 50 by 650. You can pick what works for you, but I like the way that looks. Once again, I'm gonna set my alpha to 80 so that it's just a little bit see-through. And with that done, I can head back to the panel, right click one more time. And this time we're gonna add our UI text mesh pro, and this is gonna be our dialogue text. Once again, I'm going to use my anchor presets here to stretch. We'll want to leave a little room on the left for our player's image, so I'll give a buffer of 420, and then we'll just do a padding of 20 on the other sides. At that point, I'll just fill in some sample text and set it up to look the way that I want it to. And with that done, we can go back to our dialog panel here. We're going to add UI and an image, and this is where we'll put our player's image. I'm just going to grab my player's head, drag it over here into the image category. Now for this one, I want to anchor him up to the top left of my screen. And so I'm just going to click on my anchor presets and go to the top left, then hold Option or Alt and do that again. Most likely your image won't fit perfectly. And so you'll need to do some scaling with the width and height to make it fit. In my case, that's 400 by 400. And then I'm also just going to change the position X and Y to put him in exactly the position I want him to be. And I can probably move him down just a little further. At this point, you're more or less ready to get started scripting, though just one other setup note, and that is just that in my game, I currently have an NPC. He's nothing special, just a box glider and a rigid body with a sprite, but I have added a child object, which I've named Dialog Handler, and on here, I've just put a box glider, and I made it a trigger. That way, I can. it's quite wide, as you can see, and this is just what will detect when my player is within range to talk. At this point, you can click Add Component, and we'll make a, a new script called dialogue. One last note before we get into our scripting, if you take a look one more time at our dialogue canvas, just a reminder that there's three parts we'll be accessing, the speaker's name, the dialogue text itself, and the image. And those are three things we'll be addressing in this script. So let's begin by declaring our variables. And there is going to be quite a few here. First of all, we need to make some UI references. 
Now one thing that is good practice is that rather than using public variables, we're going to use serialized field private variables. This just makes it so that we can still see the variable in Unity like a public variable, but it's also protected from being edited by other scripts, which especially as your game gets larger will become important. If you prefer to go with public variables though, they'll work just fine. Our first reference here is going to be the to the text mesh pro text that we'll be using for our speaker's name. So we'll call this one speaker text. Now you'll notice it does not like that and that's because this script does not yet have the library for text mesh pro. So we're going to head up to the top here. I'm just going to type in using tm pro. That'll clean things up down there. And then I'm just going to add a few more serialized field references. So I'm just going to borrow that text. We're going to paste that in. We're going to have one more text mesh pro text. This time it will be our dialogue text. And then we're also going to be adding an image. Now, once again, it's not going to like that. And that's because images are part of Unity's UI. And so we can come back up to the top one more time, type in using Unity engine.ui. And now that'll work just fine. This here is going to be our portrait image. So with those three references, we can now talk to the different parts of our dialogue in order to make changes depending on who's speaking and what they're saying. Now we just need to fill in those references with actual content. So this next section will be our dialogue content. Once again, we're going to make some serialized field references. This time we're going to make a string. And this one's actually going to be an array, and it's for our speaker. We're going to do the same thing, making another string array reference, this time to our dialogue. Now it's not going to like that for the moment because that's the same name as our script. So let's just call this dialogue words. <laughs> Finally, we'll make one more serialized private reference, this time to the sprite. And again, it'll be an array as we'll have a list of different sprites that we'll be using. And we'll just call this one the portrait itself. Now one little thing I'm going to do, take a look in Unity right now. You'd notice on Martin that I can now fill in by hitting this. I could put in a speaker name and I could add dialogue words. However, right now the words give very little room to write. We can fix this in our code by just under the serialized field here in square brackets, type in text area. That little change will make it so that we now have a nice big box here to write in. Finally, we also have room here where we can now start adding things like our first portraits. All right, our dialogue is getting started. And in fact, we could right now link things up. We could get our speaker text lined up our dialogue text, and our portrait image. They can talk to each other. There's information to fill them. Now we just need to tell our, have our script actually say when to fill these references with the information we put in. So let's head back to our script. Now we don't need our start method at all, so we can remove that. At this point, we'll head into update, where we just want to check for whether or not the interact button is being pressed. Now I'll show you how to set up an interact button in just a moment. Now if it is pressed, we want to make it so that our speaker text, dot text, is equal to our speaker. Now it won't like that because our speaker is part of an array and it wants to know which line of the array we want to speak to. So in square brackets, if I put zero, it would just draw from the first line. We can then do the same for our other uh, UI elements. All right, now this will work pretty well, but at the moment I can just push the interact button from anywhere on the screen and it will update as you just saw. I have no way to finish the text or make it only trigger when I'm close to my player. While we're here in Unity, I'll also show you how to set up that interact button. If you go to edit, project settings, and then go into your input manager, you'll notice that you've got all of your different button types here and I've already set one up as interact, as you can see here, and L is the button I'm using to use that. If you'd like to add some, you can add more buttons here by increasing this number, or you can just take an existing one that you're not using. You likely have fire one, two, and three, and if you're not using those, you could just click on one of them, type in the name interact and the button that will activate it. All right, now back in our code, we wanna make sure that our player is actually close to this NPC before we can speak to them. To do that, we're gonna to need to create a new variable up at the top here. We're gonna make a private bool so a true false value, and we'll call this one dialogue activated. And we're gonna head down below our update method and create an on trigger method. If you just start typing on trigger, you'll notice that you get on trigger enter 2D. You can hit return and it will generate all your syntax. We're just gonna do a check. So we'll say if collision.gameobject.tag is equal to player. 
pen then curly brackets, and we'll say what we'd like to happen there, which is just that we'd like our dialog activated to be turned true. All right, now if you click on your player back in Unity, you'll notice that there's this tag option at the top, and if you click on that, you should have a player option. Please make sure that the capitals do match. And that's what our NPC will be using to identify whether it's the player who's now entered his trigger. Now, while we're here, we're actually going to make another method, and this one's just going to be an on trigger exit 2D. Make sure you have the 2D version. When we leave here, we're just going to make dialog activated equals false. And we generally don't need to check if it's the player who's left, though you could add that detail if you're worried about it triggering for the wrong reason. Now what we can do is in our update, we can check not just if we're pushing the button, but we can add another condition. We put two ampersand. So if we're pushing the button and dialog activated is equal to true. With that done, things are working pretty good, but at the moment, our dialog will display all of the time, which is not something we want to happen. And so we're gonna make a, another reference. Once more, this is gonna be a serialized private reference, and it is to a user interface. I'm gonna put it right at the top of my UI references. This one is gonna be to the game object itself of our dialog canvas. We'll hook that up in a second, but first all I wanna do is I wanna make it so that when we push a button and we're near, the dialog canvas is set active. So we'll put dot set active and then in brackets, true. I'm then gonna copy that. And over here in our on trigger exit, we're gonna make it false so that if we walk away from the PC, it will turn off the canvas. Back in Unity now, I'll just drag my dialog canvas into that dialog canvas box. And now I can click on the dialog canvas and I can make it so that it's inactive when the game starts. Now if I'm far away from my NPC and I push the button, nothing will happen. However, if I come down within his trigger zone and push the button, it will trigger it. I can then walk away and it will turn off. We're almost done. And in fact, if all you want is the ability to have single lines of text display, you're all done. However, if you would like to be able to move through multiple lines in order to have conversations, we've got one step remaining. To do this, I'm gonna head up to the top here where we've got all our variables. And we're gonna make one more. This will be a private integer. We're gonna call this step. And this is just gonna keep track of the different steps of our dialogue. At this point then, down here in our input method, instead of always going to zero, we're gonna to go to step. So that at the start of our conversation, step will be equal to zero. But as we progress through, that number will increase so that we get all the different layers of our text. What I'll then do is down here, at the end of all of this, we'll make step go up by one. That way when I push the button again, it will now play step one, and then the next time step two, and on and on. The only thing we want now is that we need it so that once we've reached the end of the dialogue, it actually terminates. To do this, we're gonna just come to the top of this statement and add one new if statement. Here we just wanna say that if our step number is greater than or equal to, and I'm gonna use speaker as our thing here, but really we could use any of the arrays we have up above. So for example, if I have three lines of dialogue with three different speakers, once I've gone through all three of those, it would recognize that step is now equal to the number of speakers I have, and it would know that it needs to terminate this conversation. So dialogue canvas would be set active false. And because I wanna be able to have this conversation again later, I would then step, set my step back to zero. If you don't wanna be able to have this conversation over again, you don't need to bother with that. Now I'm also gonna put an else statement though, because if the conversation isn't over, we want to run all this other code that we've already written. With that done, you can go back into Unity, click on your dialog handler, and then write a few more lines of dialogue so we can test this. And with all that done, you can now head on down, talk to your NPC, and each time you push the interact key, it will advance through the dialog. Until at the very end, once it realized that there's no more dialogue coming, it will automatically terminate the conversation. You can come back later on and have more conversation if you want or walk away if you're all done. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.